Hey everybody, I've been seeing the comments coming into my email. I've been seeing the comments creep underneath some of the YouTube videos on the channel. And I want to let you all know that it's not going to be a good idea to start your record company with business credit. We're going to talk about some of the risks, but we're also going to talk about how you're going to use that business credit. I think the utility of the credit is going to outweigh the risk, but you got to know when and where to get it and how to use it. And we're going to talk about that coming up on today's episode of the Music Money Makeover Show. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Music Money Makeover Show. Let's hop right in. Now, I realize you need the money. I realize you want to start fast, all right? That it, that that need to start fast kind of fuels the, the spirit of greed, right? Because we have a vision of this grandiose place, you know, that we're going to be in in a few months. All we need is the capital to get it done and we're just going to rush there. When that happens, we think about spending other people's money. We think about the record label. If we want to stay independent, we pass off the record label and we say, well, let's go get like a business loan or something or some business credit. And you want to take that money and think of it as a record label advance. And it's not. Those are two different types of uh, financial instruments, if you will. 99% of you don't even have the pieces to go from zero to 100 right? That vision is 100 and where you are is at zero and you got to, you got to get from here to here. You don't even have the tools to get there. You don't have the know-how and neither does your team have the know-how. And even if you were to go to a record label that saw your raw talent, it would still take you quite some time to get there. Obviously you can see where I'm going. Business credit is not going to be your friend to start your record label. Now I can tell you this myself. I've actually done what it is you're talking about. I actually ran my credit up and I ran it in the ground. And I'm actually still paying for some of those mistakes I made on running up credit cards and helping out different artists uh, in my past. So I've been there. I know where you're at. I know you say, hey, this is money I can use right now. It's actually leverage. It's not money. Message. Now we got two ways we can use this credit. We can use it as a 30-day front, which is it, it, which is what it's supposed to be used for, or we can use it as revolving credit, and I'm going to break it down. A 30-day front, or net 30, if you will, sometimes it can be referred to as net 60 or net 90. It just depends on how long the lender will let you hold their money before they want it back. In most cases, it's 30 days. And with credit cards, it's net 30. You want to use it like net 30. And I'm going to explain the revolving payments in a minute. What's happening here is the credit company is issuing the leverage, which is the money. You swipe that card and you do what you need to do with it or the store offers you some type of credit and you buy the items that you need and you go do the job. And when you do that job, you not only get the money back for the credit they lent you, but you get your profit. You take that money back for the parts and things and and supplies you had to buy, you pay that off and you keep your profit. What this does is this keeps your business cash flow positive. When this keeps your business cash flow positive, the cash in your business is not touched. And that's what we want to use other people's money for. You get what I'm saying? Now, in your case, let's say you're you're running your record label. You have things like your DistroKid account. You have uh, other software expenses that you got to run. Maybe you're running some QuickBooks. You know what I mean? You got some Canva subscriptions, a bunch of all your software subscriptions. Maybe they're amounting to like three, four, five hundred dollars a month. And you want those payments to be paid for with the credit card. That's totally fine. You want to keep your expenses together. That's totally fine. You just need to make sure that you have five hundred dollars of income coming in so you can pay that off. So you have a zero balance at the end of the day. That is how you're supposed to use it when you're running this record label. Now let's talk about what happens when you want to use it as revolving payments. So let's say out of that $500, let's say, let's just say you really only use $300. Well, you have an extra $200 a month to spend for business expenses and you need a particular item that's going to be $2,000, right? So you go and you swipe the card and then you pay for the $2,000 item. You have that now in your possession to make more money over time. And this will give you more access to more things. But you already allocated in your budget that you could afford $200 for, let's say, 10 months. Obviously, there's interest involved. But on some credit cards, you don't have any interest for the first three years. This is business credit. But let's just say you swipe the card for $2,000 and you have the allocated space of $200 in extra expenses a month that you can stomach. You're still paying this card off. 
You get what I'm saying? But now you have your $2,000 item and this is helping you do more business and now it's paid off over the course of 10 months. You see what I'm saying? That's what I mean and that's how you're gonna use your business credit. It is not free money that you can use and just never pay back because as your business grows, you're going to need that credit later to do things like this. Hire employees. Yes, people hire employees on credit because they want the business to have all the cash in it, right? The employees do the work, you get the profit, you pay the employees so they can always have a guaranteed check, but then you take the profits that you earn and you put that in the bank account or you take the revenue that you earn and you split up the profit, you scrape that off and you keep that and you pay the credit card company and you zero out the balance every month. This builds up more credit, more credit, more credit. What do you do with that credit in a record label? You take that and you hire more personnel and staff to expand your operation, all right? So we're not getting the business credit card in the beginning to just run up the money. You gotta have cash flow. We're gonna talk about that in a minute, but I'm gonna give you one more scenario of what it looks like to get some revenue here. So say we got a record deal and we got a $250,000 artist advance plus $750 for marketing, promotion, touring support, and um, any other things that may come across the table. Now, in exchange for that $1 million that they just gave you, right, they allocated for you, after you pay it back, you get a 15% royalty. Of course, you get you pay this money back at, a, at about six point, it's gonna take $6.6 .6 million to pay back a 15% royalty. Um, on a $1 million loan. Obviously, this is not a good deal unless you don't really care about your masters and you're using the leverage, you're leveraging the record label's money to make more money through your merch, your touring, and your brand sponsorships because you get the fame. You get what I'm saying? So you sacrifice the masters to get more money in this other category over here or the other three categories. It's the very same concept, kinda. You know what I mean? You don't have more lead, you don't have as... You don't have as much room to spread your wings if we're doing it with like banks and stuff like that. With the with the with the regular labels, you got a lot more restrictions, but the concept is the same. You get what I'm saying? Now, you're more than likely going to be the personal guarantee if the business goes bust. Meaning that if you did if you sign up for the business credit card under a personal guarantee, if the business goes under, then you are going to be liable for the payments. This means that you end up messing up your personal finances and you have to pay all this de debt back in addition to any personal debts you have over time. Let's say you wanna sign another artist, you start a new LLC and you wanna go about this again. Even though you might get a card or a line of credit that is not reported on your personal credit, they're still gonna look at your personal credit and look at the credit history and see what happened. So now it's gonna make it a lot harder for you to get more credit on this brand new LLC because of what happened in the past especially if the debt is not paid. You get what I'm saying? Is it a good idea to have business credit for your record label? Absolutely. I 100% believe in it. It's just when and where you do it. It's how do you set up the LLC the right way on the front end so the creditors say, oh, this business is amazing, all right? At least they have a great profile and we believe that these guys will be great for our business credit. Well, you gotta do that with an LLC and you gotta set it up the right way. Well, what a perfect place to learn how to do it through the 60-day record label. But hold your horses here. What about the cash flow on the back end? We made our music, we have our art, we put it out, and we have to collect the money. Well, if you need to open up the back end for the cash flow, all of that is in the 60-day record label. So now that you open up all of your accounts to get the cash flow coming in on the back end, now all we have to do is start promoting. Well, once you promote all this stuff, the cash is flowing in and out of the LLC. You did that through the 60-day record label, and now you can go and get the business credit and use that to hire people so that it can expand your business. That's how it's supposed to work. That's actually why I wrote the book that way. Now, there's a lot more coming with that book, but it is the foundation for everything that you need to do to grow a record label, okay? You can't start thinking about a record label from a single artist perspective and saying, I gotta get an A&R department and the marketing department and then blah, blah, blah. It doesn't work that way. You got to build the structure first. I'm sorry if you're too art artistic to understand, but that's just what it is. This is a business. We buy and we sell copyrights. That's what we do in this business and we exploit them. 
So, you got work to do, man. Grab that 60-day record label and set up your accounts on the front and the back end. The LLC on the front, the accounts on the back. Get the cash flowing so that you can get the credit and maybe get some other loans outside of just credit, right? And you can get some family and friends to front you cash or just give you gifts and stuff so you can build your empire, your very own record label. I think I'm going to make a video about how to monopolize, how to play Monopoly with your very own record career. I think that'll be fun to do. Uh, it's just a side thought. So regardless if you want the credit, you even care about this video, you even care about what I said or not, you're still going to need the business structure to actually survive in this record business, okay? Now, if you were confused in the beginning about this business credit, these loans, all the stuff you're going to take, at least now you have a clear foresight of what it is. So go forth and be great, boss. Music Money Makers, just remember, if you make music, you should make money, all right? Visit musicmoneymakeover.com, book a call, download the 60-day record label, and I'll see you next time. Peace.